Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, happy weekend, everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access Trader.com. Uh, nightly wrap up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, week of uh, trading. If you can do me uh, a very, very big favor, all I ask is if you like the content, if you are an avid uh, viewer, again, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. The only thing I ask is if you could be uh, so kind, take a second and click that like button. It will help the channel and I will continue to the end to do my best. Uh, to point you in the right direction on today to day basis. So a lot of stuff going on this week, right? A lot of stuff going on. You had uh, CPI, you had PPI, you had ABC, you had ESPN, and every other thing, everything does determining data. You had FOMC meeting, they cut another uh, 25 basis points. You had the weekless jobless claims that fell to a six month uh, low. Uh, but the most important part what we had was a definitive answer to what happens when you lose short-term support. So let's talk about it, right? If you guys remember, the market started really getting some aggressive, violent moves to the downside ahead of the election, right? And the reason why a lot of people think there was a lot of selling or very, very uh, aggressive areas of the market where the stocks were sold was there was the you know the fear the healthy fear that the government was going to be led by uh, the Democratic Party at least uh, in the chief executive office and you saw these really nasty polls leading up to the election you saw one on October the fifteenth you saw one on October the twenty third and as we were getting closer and closer to the election. Two days before the election, you saw this really, really aggressive move uh, to the downside. Again, we're just using the cues as a barometer on October the 31st on Halloween. Scary, right? So when Trump was uh, voted in, right, when Trump was voted in or at least won the election, we had this really aggressive four or five day move. You guys remember it was euphoric, absolutely euphoric. Uh, the cues literally went from uh, 484 to, you know, 515 in a matter of five days. And in the last several days, we started talking about it on Monday's video, on Tuesday's video, and on Wednesday's video. If you guys remember, all you got to do is go back to those, at least even just go back to Wednesday's video. Uh, I talked about that the market, right? Uh, the queues closed three days in a row, lower highs, lower lows, and they stopped right on the five-day moving average. Uh, and again, for all you guys who are brand new or all you guys who have just been very loyal viewers for many, many years, you know the importance, at least for me, the importance of the five-day moving average. You go back to Wednesday's video, um, you know, pretty clean. You know, I, and I, I, I told you guys the level uh, that the market really needed to defend, and they didn't do so, right? Uh, the Qs lost... Uh, 509.80. That was the video we talked about on Wednesday. And the significance of losing the five day moving average, that means the sellers, right? The sellers were going to take control of the next interval. Okay. It doesn't mean that was the top. If you guys remember, I said there was, you know, it's not a, a rolling, you know, it's not a blow off top. It's a, it could be a potential blow off pause. But the significance of the bulls defending the five day moving average was going to be very, very important going forward in the next couple of days. Well, that's what happens, right? That's what happens. Technical analysis is there to help us. It's not there to trick us. It's not there to have a, a discussion of what we think is going to happen six months from now. Technical analysis is there to guide us, to give us uh, enough data that we can make, uh, especially if you're an active trader, to give you uh, enough data, enough information that you can make uh, a wise decision based on sentiment for the next day. And yesterday, we lost the five-day moving average on the close. Obviously, Jerome Powell made some comments that the market didn't like. And today was the crescendo, right? That was the crescendo. So if you're blind to the market, if you're blind uh, to, you know, that, that there is two sides of the market, we talked about this again in nauseam on Wednesday, then you got caught in the spin cycles. It's pretty much cut and dry. And, you know, nobody 
that's trading for a long time is long stocks aggressively when you lose the five day. Uh, Thursday, we lost the five day and today, very, very disgusting. All right. Very, very disgusting pull. And when you look at the final numbers, again, not horrible considering last week, uh, the NASDAQ was up, you know, up 5.7%, but we still sank about 3.1% uh, on the NASDAQ, two plus percent uh, on the S&P. Now, here's the question, right? Here's the question going into next week. Okay. Sometimes you can split hairs. Sometimes you can just try to make excuses. You can do all these things. But here's the, the, the really fair question going into next week. So do we take, right? Do we take the previous week selling as an indication of the real market? Or was this just the euphoria, right? They're just the euphoria that the Republicans got what they wanted. Supposedly, this is good for the market, right? Supposedly, this is good for the market. It is a a Republican uh, candidate that's in the White House and obviously we've made incredible amounts of uh, examples how the market's been good under both Democrats and Republicans. But the question, the fair question going into uh, next week is, well, was this selling, right? Was this selling leading up to the election the real, right? The real face value of what's things to come into the end part of the fourth quarter leading into the first quarter of of uh, 2025, or was this just, you know what, kind of a blow off euphoric high filling in some gaps and we're going to start resuming the next day or so? It's very, very tough, right? It's a very, very tough question to answer without uh, obviously getting more, uh, without obviously getting more data in front of us, but this was not a pretty sight, right? And a lot of people, when they were, t- you know, looking at last week in the markets, well, Tesla's going to 500, Nvidia's going to 200, uh, you know, Amazon's going to 500, everything's going everywhere. But uh, again, last week was a perfect example of the Powerball mentality. Again, we talked about this Wednesday that, you know, again, we you know you won, right? The Qs went from, uh, you know, put up a 30 point move in five, six days. Stocks were going crazy. Tesla was up 120 points. I mean, you have to know when you won. And again, it really did show that most of retail public didn't know they won. Uh, and the reality is we did lose the five-day moving average. And now we are faced with a very, very uh, honest question of what happens next, right? So you can see here how the market has kind of played out here over the last several times that we lost the 34-day moving average. Last time we lost it, we went down to the next supply. And today we held, right? Today we held uh, the five-day moving average we have to see the hell of the 34 moving average on the close. Uh, the key is for next week. Okay. Once I told you guys uh, the level we were watching, the 509.80s to the downside, here's kind of your level going into next week, right? You have this 494.40s. That is the low of today. Okay. If we start losing this 494 level on the QQQs, then yes, there's a very, very good chance we're going to get back down to the 50 day moving average of 489. And at that point, again, I don't want to put the cart in the horse in front of the horse, but at that point, we're going to have a really, really fair conversation of what happens next. Uh, if you, again, if you've been watching this broadcast for a very long time, you know what happened in 2022. Okay. We lost the 50 day moving average and the NASDAQ went down 35%. Okay. This is not, you know, something that happened 50 years ago. This is something that just happened uh, a couple of years ago. I don't want to have that conversation yet, right? I don't. I want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Again, is there a possibility in the world we lose today's channels on, uh, you know, Monday or Tuesday? We get down to the 50 day moving average. We hold, we trap shorts and starts the next leg up. It's all on the table, right? It's absolutely all on the table, but it's very tough, right? Very, very tough, at least entering Monday session that you are super bullish going into Monday, right? Super bullish going into Monday. Risk is on. Everything's okay. Okay. You got to be very naive or just, let me be nice. You got to be very naive to think everything is okay uh, going into uh, next week. Having said that, right? Having said that, there are some names that continue to act really, really well. You know, PLTR uh, acts amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, AFRM is holding up very, very well, right? Tesla, despite 
really aggressive pulls, really, really aggressive pulls. We got a nice pivot today on Tesla to the upside is holding up. I still, I still believe it should test the 10 day moving average. So I'm still kind of hoping that we get that 10 day moving average wash, but you can't deny how good the stock is holding. We're still seeing, uh, in, incredible amounts of, incredible amounts of call buying continuing this name. But keep this in mind. I don't care how strong the stock is. If the market pulls and we test the 50 day moving average, everything's going to get hit. Okay. There's no such thing as, well, my stock is going to survive because it held up in the last couple of days. It doesn't work that way. And when you look at a lot of names, especially in the mega cap group, uh, going into next week, yeah, there's some problems, right? There's some problems. You got Amazon who had, uh, an absolutely uh, phenomenal run, got pulled very, very hard today. Uh, not only is, um, Bezos still selling stock. Apparently, McKenzie, right? His ex-wife uh, is selling uh, stock as well. Uh, you have an AMD, and we talked about AMD in the last couple of days. It's absolutely murder, right? Micron lost the 50-day moving average this week, right? Lost the 50-day moving average, is getting absolutely hit, right? Just hit one after another after another. Google, who actually had a really nice quarter, is coming in as well. Microsoft, that looked like it was about to explode a couple of days ago, is coming in as well. Apple, you know, is actually holding up fairly decent and is still holding into this range. But again, you can't really feel great about it. Uh, Meta looks like it is one day away. Meta closed below the 50-day moving average today. Guys, that's not a good thing. Uh, Meta is literally one day away from, you know, maybe testing uh, this 540s area. So it's very, very important to kind of get your ducks in a row for Monday. Look at longs, look at shorts, but mostly look at shorts. There's a lot of names uh, that are starting to, to set up here. And for every name that is holding up, like a PLTR, uh, like like a firm, the Coinbase stocks are still going out of their minds. Okay, They don't know there was any type of selling at all. Uh, MSTR still looks uh, great as well. A lot of these uh, names are waking up. But the overall feel, right? The overall feel is not a great vibe uh, going into next week. So the most important part is, again, I encourage every single new trader. I don't care if you're brand new to trade, okay? Uh, it doesn't make a difference if you're a full-time trader, part-time trader. You got to put in a full-time effort, okay? The market doesn't care that you only want to trade once a week. It will kill you, okay? It will kill you. The less information you have, the higher probability you'll go on tilt before you reach your potential. So even if you are a part-time trader, part-time participator, part-time investor, you got to put in the work that is a full-time effort. Because again, if we start losing key levels, again, this week was a prime example of what happened when you lost your first key level, and we start losing today's channel tomorrow, we will see a test of the 50-day moving average. And again, I don't want to put fear into anybody's hearts, but you guys know what happens when you lose the 50-day moving average. So again, mentally, you need to start at least getting prepared. Mentally, you need to start kind of getting ahead of your holding. So if it does happen, you are prepared. You're hedged, whatever the case may be. Don't just sit there and say, well, I think the markets will go higher at, at some point. Yeah, maybe it does, maybe it will. Traditionally, it does. But again, we could have a year like we saw in 2022. Who's to say we don't? Again, just putting it all out there. The most important part of being a participant in the financial markets is always thinking of worst case scenarios. What happens if hell freezes over? What happens if shit hits the fan? Am I prepared? Am I prepared to the upside? Am I prepared to the downside? What can I do to eliminate as much risk as possible and still take advantage of price action? Obviously, all you guys have different levels of experience, have different timelines, uh, have different um, account sizes. So I can't speak for everyone. You know, what's good for one might not be good for the other, but from the active trading point of view, really understand your lessons from all you guys who listened to that 509 80s level that we talked about on Wednesday. You obviously knew what potentially could happen once you lost that. Now listen to me further, right? Again, now that, that that's out of the way, you can't get that back. You can't get your money back on the long side. Now the key is if we lose the 34-day moving average going into next week, the 50-day will be a battleground for a potential, again, potential fight of who's in control going into the first quarter of 2025. Guys, have a great, amazing, wonderful weekend. Hope everybody is uh, loving life, living life healthy, 
and happy. And with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take care, guys. Have a great, great weekend.